I am speaking on behalf of Democracia Global, a small uh, organization of Buenos Aires, Democracia Global, uh, Movimiento por la Unión Sudamericana y el Parlamento Mundial. We were very committed to the following campaign, the UNPA campaign uh, at the global level, but at the regional level, the attempts of creating some kind of uh, regional integration were failing and failing successively. Mercosur and UNASUR and CELAC and Caribbean and every, everything was uh, in a difficult moment, uh, maybe uh, going back more than uh, forward. So well, we started to think about what can we do uh, uh, on this uh, and we uh, started not seven years ago or eight years, it was just four years, three years ago we started a campaign for this. The reason is very clear. This is the number of uh, crimes uh, in the world, the number of people that uh, have been killed uh, according to the United Nations. Uh, it was 2013. And as you can see, America uh, is getting the most violent, the most violent continent all over the world. We had the dubious honor to be the most unequal uh, continent, but now we arrived also to the, uh, to the level of having more than a third of people that uh, have been killed every year uh, because of, uh, in a violent manner, uh, they are Americans. <coughs> And if you look at the level of this problem at the Latin American level, you find the, 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 the level is uh, really amazing. Uh, it's over 20 people every 100,000 uh, uh, inhabitants. And you have heard for sure about Mexico and America Central, Guatemala, the Maras, etc. But if you look at the average, it's not different, not so different in South America than in Central America. So, COPLA is a, 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 um, a Spanish word, it means uh, uh, a, a way of uh, poetry and, and music. But the idea is to create a Latin American and Caribbean criminal court against transnational uh, organized crime. And the goal of the institution is about trying to um, take ta tackle the problem in a different way. Now we have many uh, uh, problems, uh, and the reason for the organized crime becoming so uh, strong in the region are, in my opinion, two. First, we are uh, fighting only at the basic level, so uh, at the level of where the uh, criminality <coughs> occurs. And we have doing almost nothing at the couple of the organization, of the mafia organization. And that's because there is a link between uh, 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 organized crime and politics and judges and forces of security, etc. There is a collusion, there is common affairs, common business at the top of the level. No, we need a court in order to uh, put uh, the goal about um, dismantling and judging the members, the top members of each organization. On the other hand, uh, the problem of organized crime is getting regional and global. Organizations are getting uh, transnational, supranational, regional, global, and they move in the 21st century. Colombian criminals that are being uh, persecuted in Colombia, they came to Buenos Aires, they put themselves and their families in the suburbs of Buenos Aires in a very good, in very good neighborhoods, and they have just a room with five screens with Skype, and they manage the Colombian organization from Buenos Aires. This is transnational strategy, international strategy. At the same time, we're trying to persecute these guys by sending papers from the national prosecutor in Argentina to the Colombian prosecutor there and nothing happens uh, time uh, 
flies. And there's a, a very concrete example. Argentina and Paraguay are both members of Mercosur uh, since so 20 years. They are in the same block. But if a, a criminal in Paraguay, uh, an Argentine uh, is um, detected in Paraguay and the police is caught him, he could manage the situation for being in Paraguay for at least three years. This is the calculation we have. In three years, we, you can destroy the proofs, you can do nothing about prosecuting the, the men, and we need to, to fight this reality, which is a reality of the 21st century with the uh, elements that the 21st century provides, and not with the organization, the national states and national divisions which are from the 20th uh, century. That's why we think we need something at the regional level in order, in order, to, in order to cope the, the thing. And basically, we are proposing a court which is made based on the Palermo Conve Convention. The Palermo <coughs> Convention was uh, some years uh, after the creation of the International Criminal Court, and it was what, at the beginning, Organized crime was part of the program of the International Criminal Court. It was a concrete uh, Trinidad Tobago proposal about putting uh, uh, organized crime uh, on, on the Rome Institute. It was rejected because of good reason, I think. And then the United Nations convoked a, an assembly uh, uh, and they, uh, at, Paler at Palermo, it was called the Palermo. Uh, convention and protocol, and then define uh, the kind of transnational crimes that had to be committed in at least uh, two countries or having effects in at least two countries. And basically, we are speaking about uh, drug trafficking, uh, uh, traffic of arms, uh, traffic of human beings for sexual or labor slavery. We are speaking about uh, also uh, money laundering, which is very important in the region because maybe if organized crime is the first problem in Latin America, the second one is corruption. And if you block uh, money laundering, you have good possibilities of reducing at least uh, corrupt political corruption. So, uh, what's the strategy? We, we copied basically the strategy of the creation of International Criminal Court. In one hand, we are trying to create a broad Latin American uh, um, network of organizations of civil society fighting for the creation of the COPLA, uh, trying to have uh, the attention, to attract the attention of uh, politicians, lawyers, uh, judges, uh, members uh, of parliaments, intellectuals, and so on. In, at the same time, we have draft already, uh, uh, we, we have uh, a draft of a, an institute uh, that is going to be put on the pages of the uh, Minister of uh, Ministry of Justice, Argentine Minister of Justice, uh, during March. Uh, and um, of course, we we want to be effective in convoking poli political parties and governments because at the end, this has to be a campaign, this has to be a policy, this has to be a goal. Uh, in the hands of the governments. Well, this is we, this is about the background about Nuremberg, International Criminal Court, and different transnational um, trials. Palermo Convention, the same. Let's go. We um, uh, I already spoke about the goal. The scale is Latin America. Latin America, is very, this is very important. Why Latin America and not all America? Why not global? Well, so of course, the problem of um, organized crime is a global <coughs> trouble, and we have at the end to fix that at the global level. But the problem is only the first problem of, uh, of a region in Latin America. You know, if you go to a, a poor um, towns in Buenos Aires and you speak to the people, people don't ask anymore for uh, jobs or education. The first thing they put on the agenda, and this was, this is, was very well studied, is about uh, human life. They are menaced by the guys 
they they are they have fear of their sons to become uh, prostitutes uh, in the hands of uh, trafficking the trafficking of human beings or to be uh, killed or to be uh, absorbed by an organization to be uh, slaves of a, ma of, of a mafia and this is the basic concern poor people have so the problem of security connected with the development of organized crime has become the basic thing on the social division in Latin America. It's not anymore about how much do you earn, it's indirectly if you have money enough you are safe, if you have not you are in the hands of organized crime. It's also, as I say, a basic problem, the corruption. This is impacts also in politics heavily, particularly in countries like Mexico, in which you know a Jotzinapa example. So uh, the the major of a city put a group of students in the hands in the hands of uh, organized crime, and they were killed and they disappeared. Forty people, you know, forty-three people disappeared, and it was calculated in Mexico that. In between 30,000 and 60,000 people were killed or disappeared during the last 10 years. So it means that the basic menaces and the basic threats to, to human rights in Latin America are not connected anymore to, to military dictatorship, but to the question of organized crime. And this is a basic important thing. It's also a limitation of, uh, for uh, the economy. So the uh, national budget of Mexico is about 8% eight, uh, 8 of the national budget of Mexico is dedicated to this, to this thing, to security, instead of being in education, health, and other services. And it's also a limitation for investment, foreign invest, investment of the same companies in Mexico. If they expand and they have more people, they have to put the CEO and the board, etc., and they have to spend a lot of money in order to protect them and their families for the, the menaces of kidnapping and so on. So it's just it's some kind, the, the message is the, this problem, organized crime, is part of all the agenda. Gender agenda, it is about human trafficking. Uh, it's uh, the basic menace to gender equality right now. And it's about also connected with transparency and corruption and, and social uh, equality, etc. Uh, that's why we think that Latin America is a good continent to start. If we are so successful, we, we hope we are going first to show to the world and to ourselves that Latin Americans, we are able to manage our own problems, not just to complain about the United States entering through DIA in our affairs, etc., but to manage our own problems. Uh, and this could be helpful also in other terms of regional integration if the countries of Latin America uh, are able to solve or to help to solve this situation uh, in, in, the, in this field. We hope this is going to be a good example in order to be to move forward also in economic integration and so on. Um, what else? Ah, the flexible framework. There were many proposals. There is an ongoing proposal from Ecuador about putting a court like this in the in the UNASU. We insisted about first thing this has to be Latin American, Mexico and countries of Central America and the Caribbean had to be included, we cannot leave them uh, alone. Uh, and secondly, we need a flexible approach. If you put this initiative inside the Mercosur or the UNASUR, you are going to finish discussing how many washing machines you are going to export me and I am going to sign to you if you don't export washing machines to us. So this is, this is a very concrete problem each country, uh, any country that is willing to to join the coalition, to join the the the, the, the court, is welcome. This is what we call flexible institutional framework. Uh, of course, we have to manage the things. Uh, we are very friendly to the international criminal court work. Uh, I had a meeting just 
a couple of days ago with the president and the prosecutor. They occurs to be Argentine too, so I know him, uh, them uh, for a long time, and they are very friendly. And we have very good, very good ideas about how to organize the process by by both of them. Uh, so I mean, there is no overlap with the International Criminal Court. International Criminal Court is about. Uh, crimes of uh, against humanity, political crimes, and this is about uh, crimes uh, which uh, have the uh, goal of uh, profits. That's the basic uh, difference, and and that's about reality. So we had two basic arguments uh, because you know the objection. What about national sovereignty, national jurisdiction, and so on? So first. We are uh, um, using the same complementary principle as the International Criminal Court. I mean, uh, the COPLA is going to act only after the national justice uh, has shown that it's enabled to, to cope with uh, a problem. And most, almost all the, the uh, Latin American countries are members of the International Criminal Court and are part of the Roman Statute, but they are also signatories of the Palermo Convention, which means that their governments has a commitment uh, towards their own society, but also to the international community, because if you have uh, organized crime in your country, you are not affecting only your country, you are affecting also neighborhood, you are affecting uh, other countries, the affairs uh, of drugs between Argentina and Mexico were amazing during last year, and this is an example, this is a responsibility of the governments to, to tackle down the problem at their level. And these are the signatories, you, you know, except in the Guayana, almost all the countries of the region are signatories, so our argument is <coughs> why if a govern a country accepted the complementary principle at the International Criminal Court, they are not going to accept this for the COPLA. Why, if they are signatories of the uh, Palermo Convention, they would not accept to a court, which basically is enforcing the Convention of Palermo. Ratification. Uh, I say that, the same, you know, this is uh, signatories and ratifying of the Rome Institute. Uh, I think this. Uh, one of the objections is about econo uh, the economics, the, uh, the economic aspect of the thing. First, we are thinking about a structure which has to be very tiny and very uh, cheap. Uh, basically, we are proposing each country use their own resources. Each country has that agrees to be part uh, to, of the court, they have to uh, uh, propose a judge and a prosecutor according to the same rule they use for designating their judges at the top level of their justice system. And they have to propose this and the rest of the state members <laughs> to say yes we are set by majority and no we reject we want another one in order to have guarantees about the identity and the behavior uh, moral behavior of these people and on the same way we are proposing that each country that is part of the court put at, to the disposition of the court a uh, security force high training uh, security force that keeps their duties at the national level in order not to increase the budget but if the court needs uh, some concrete uh, action in a country they have the control of a national force and also the, con the disposition of a prison a high security prison and these are very concrete things think about Chapo Guzman Chapo Guzman is from Mexico he is maybe the most famous now of the drug dealers and so on and he was in prison he escaped he was put again in prison he escaped it and now mexico, mexico had to uh, resign uh, <coughs> chapo guzman in the hands of the united states and this is you know 
because they cannot just keep the man inside the prison. What about putting Chapo Guzman in a Chilean prison? This is using the same transnational mechanism that Colombian drug dealers use when they escape to Argentina. And this is useful also for the protection of witness. No, mm -hmm. no national police put you under protection in your own country. You know why don't you put in another country? This kind of transnational mechanism can be used also by uh, for enforcing the law and not just for violating the law. Uh, and we think that and we are going to save money because if you basically Mexico put 8% of the budget and basically these are uh, cars and guns and you know patrols all over the country just trying to control the, the situation on the base we say if, we, if the court is able to judge the couple and to keep the to take the control of the economic assets the organization is going to be the organization is going to be destroyed and this is really less expensive than putting 10 or, or 100 uh, police patrols uh, on the streets and finally if we are successful in this we are going to have a really better climate uh, in terms of economic development and uh, investment etc <coughs> finally this is our report the, our first trial was to be uh, regional so I, I we started the work in Argentina but I went to Chile I went to Peru I went to Colombia I went twice to Mexico and it was very successful I found a lot of people saying this is a good idea we want to follow but it was very difficult to keep the contact uh, we have uh, a really reduced uh, force of volunteers they work wonderfully but we, we cannot keep the, the so what we think <coughs> this is a part of the campaign which is really important we had been really successful here and here we had some of prestigious men all over the world uh, being signatories uh, of the campaign from Vargas Llosa from Peru and, and, and Anthony Giddens uh, and also experts on these issues like uh, David Hale, Daniela Kibuji and Lucio Levi and so on uh, we were also very successful at the national Argentine political level uh, you have there uh, the vice president of the nation she is a signatory uh, she signed uh, three years ago more or less so at the beginning of the campaign the second one is the Minister of Justice and Human Rights is another signatory the Minister of Security uh, the two most well-known prosecutors in our country Campagnoli and Science the president of the uh, group the official group in the chamber Mario Negri the most prestigious constitutionalists in Argentina subside and so on many other uh, the ambassador at the Vatican and many well-known the um, boss of the uh, office against corruption uh, and, and the other two candidates to the national presidency and so on very successful campaign this because as we had few money and we had to think we decided just to be concentrated in Argentina and we had very good results and also this this is a resolution of the Senate the Chamber of Deputies and the Parliament of Mercosur unanimous resolution in favor of the initiative uh, at the national level these are uh, I think in three years of such a teeny campaign uh, amazing success at the same time this is uh, a balance for the future I'm going to finish with this it's uh, we hope during this year we are able, able to convince the presidents of Argentina Macri uh, I have a meeting a previous meeting uh, in March uh, of taking uh, this concept and this campaign in his hand we have the vice president 
we have the Minister of Justice, we have the Minister of Security, the boss of the anti-corruption office. Uh, so it's, we had resolution uh, from the chamber. Uh, and we are very confident we are going to be successful, uh, at least we hope. But at the same time, we failed completely about becoming uh, not national, but regional, and not only political uh, environment, but civil society environment. And this is because of the lack of money. Uh, so we are re rethinking about relaunching the campaign at the Latin American level. And we are thinking about in two years having an, offices, an office in at least uh, six countries in the, in, in the, in the region, meaning uh, Mexico and Brazil and Colombia, Chile, uh, Costa Rica, and, uh, and so on. And when I say an office, I mean just uh, a person part-time uh, working for having a, 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 a meeting every, at least one meeting every year about the, the COPLA idea and the COPLA campaign, convoking uh, judges to be part of the process of improving our statute. Uh, this is going to be open for judge suggestions and advisory from uh, from also from this institute and from you individually, uh, you can enter uh, the page of the Minister, Ministry of Justice in a, cop, a couple of weeks and be part of the process. On the other hand, we need somebody there on the field trying to do the same things we did in Argentina, in different countries of the region in order to become uh, regional, not only uh, an Argentine initiative, and in order to uh, involve uh, civil society in order to, to, to keep the control and monitor the, con the, the process, helping uh, national governments and keeping an eye on what's going to be to be done. So that's the, uh, our basic proposal. Thank you for listening to me, for listening to me and I hope you can uh, make uh, concrete uh, suggestions and uh, support to them. The first thing is just being a signatory the second thing is asking your group, your political group, your party, your institute, your uh, your school or your faculty to be uh, supportive, to be part of the uh, international coalition. And this is not this is of course open to the world because uh, as a warfareist, I am. I think this is just the first step of something that could become global if we are successful in Latin America. Thank you very much.